We're on the road again, heading out into the Black Hills on another adventure. Uh, this morning we're going to go to a place that's called Gold Mountain. And it's an old gold mine, a prospect that was developed in the, I think the 19 teens and 20s. And when we get up there, there's a date up there. So we'll take a look at that so we know for sure when the date was. But it's been uh, one of the, it was one of these mines that did not produce or did not produce much. Uh, it was developed to a certain point and then they kind of just walked away from it. And then a number of years ago, some historical group got together and made it into a kind of a historical site with, with placards that point to different things around the property and whatnot. So we'll take a walk through there and look at that property. So let's go exploring. nice day out today temperature wise it's 81 the sun is shining but it's still incredibly hazy from fire smoke uh, it's, I don't think it's going to be clear around here until maybe the rains and the snows in the fall put the fires out to the west and to the north so we're just going to have to live with with uh, hazy skies
Okay, we are here at the bottom of Mineral Mountain and I've got the Black Hills geologic map out. And we're right in here where the orange arrow is. And uh, we have not been in this unit uh, before. We're right outside of the town of Hill City that on the map is right um, here. So we've come kind of west and then north on uh, Burnt Fork Creek. And uh, we're right up here at Mineral Mountain. So Mineral Mountain is uh, metamorphosed black shale, early Proterozoic, and it's uh, phyllite schist, uh, garnet schist, and uh, some metagray wacky. And metagray wacky is uh, metamorphosed deep sea sediments. And so again, this was originally an, an oceanic uh, seabed, and uh, the minerals been metamorphosed, and some of them during metamorphism and other events that took place back even in the Proterozoic and through the Laramide orogeny, which lifted up the Black Hills most recently, uh, then some of these things have been uh, mineralized with ore grade minerals. And that was the hope here. They uh, developed this as a gold property, uh, sold it to Eastern investors uh, as a gold property. Uh, not really sure if they even pulled anything out of here. So uh, anyway, let's go take a look. Okay, we're coming up on the, the property now and at the top of this small little ridge. And you can see up ahead of us is a head frame that's still there and a boiler over here in this brick house. There used to be a mill on site down in the valley below us where they actually uh, brought up rock and, and crushed it. I don't know if I believe that it was ever ore, but it was rock that was crushed. So this has been restored in recent years. Uh, some of the timber has been replaced. The tin up on the roof is new. You can see some of the boards that are new. Some of the concrete's been replaced. The support, the vertical supports uh, for the slide up there has been reinforced and whatnot. So it's truly a, just a historical monument. And then down below down here, you can see the concrete, and that's the original concrete from the uh, from the mill building. And there's more down below, and more down below, and then down in the valley down there, you can see you can see uh, more concrete where the mill was in the valley where they had a ready water source. So that's Burnt Fork uh, going through there, uh, the little creek, and was their water supply. So this is it. It's uh, it's probably not more than an acre or two acre site up here uh, that was uh, developed. And uh, for and we'll, one of these boards here has some years on it. We'll find that and then see what it says. Okay, so this is uh, an old boiler up here. Uh, all these pipes run back and forth through this uh, barrel. Fire was stoked in the bottom. Uh, probably wood fire up here unless they hauled in some coal. I don't see any evidence of, of coal though. And uh, then they would heat the water up to steam and then the steam would power their little motors and whatnot. And, and uh, you know, so whatever they use this in the processing for. Okay, so here's a little history of uh, Gold Mountain. This says it started back in the uh, late 1920s. And in 1929, uh, geology report was filed uh, that talked about the value of quartz veins, which are on site here. And I think we'll see some over here on the hillside here in a minute. And then they uh, uh, continued through the 30s. And by the mid 30s, it says there was a mill that was capable of producing or processing 25 tons of ore per day. And, uh, and then, every, then it kind of just, during depression years, closed down, went away, uh, not much of a history left uh, from it. So whether they're actually produced gold or not, or in any quantity to even justify developing a mine up here, it's kind of unknown. 
the feeling kind of over the years that I've always been told is that uh, there was not, not very much, if any, gold here. And the property was developed as ba basically an attempt to uh, get investors to put money into the project. They used part of that money to build these facilities around here, build the structures, uh, dig a shaft, and then uh, when everything closed down, they kind of had a pretty good reserve in their pocket to run away with. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, because it says right here that the, uh, that the Gold Mountain Mine left little history behind. So whatever that means, there's not much uh, in the history records to show what happened here. Uh, but this is what it is today. So let's go walk over here. There's an attic kind of going back into the hillside. Take a look at some of the rock. Okay, so obviously this has pictures on it from actual gold mines in the Black Hills, not from here. So again, kind of begs the question on whether they actually uh, brought ore out of this ground or, or not. Of course, I haven't been in the shaft and I don't know how deep it goes. Uh, it's blocked off now, just the head frame remains. But let's go up here and look at this. Uh, if you can see here in the, in the side of the, the hill, it's kind of like a small little tunnel starting to get dug into here. And these are called adits. Uh, if it would have gone back further into the hill, it would have been like an underground tunnel and an access to the rock uh, under the ground. Uh, but it was just a kind of a, just a basic effort to show that they were digging is all, but they didn't, they didn't develop it to any extent. Let's go look at the rock. So the description said that these were, were black uh, phyllites and, and black shales and muds. And you can see the, these are very, very thinly bedded, uh, very fine uh, bedding in here, thin beds, very, very laminate, very uniform. So this was deposited on a sea bottom that was quiet and the mud was undisturbed. And then was metamorphosed to still see that uh, remnant of, of original bedding in here. So it's kind of platy. This is, this is uh, I can see a little bit of glint of crystals in here. So it's probably phyllite. It's not slate grade, but it's not, uh, it's not much, much higher than slate grade. It's a low grade phyllite. And there it goes. Uh, I'll try for something else. So don't know if you can see the the crystals glinting or not, but uh, but it's very dark, very black. I don't know what we're going to see here. We'll take a look real quick at the hand lens. So it looks like it's mainly uh, uh, biotite and and some muscovite, there might be some quartz grains here, there, here and there. Trying to find some garnets. You don't see any garnets in here. There may be one right in the center here. It's hard to see, they're really small. But we'll take this uh, back and if there's anything interesting uh, in here, we'll look at it uh, through the microscope. But I don't even see any quartz veins through here. It just looks like uh, this uh, dark black uh, metasediment mud. 
that has been uh, metamorphosed into this fine grain uh, phyllitic material. So this would not have hosted uh, more than likely any, any kind of gold or usually that's associated with quartz and quartz veining. So let's keep hunting. Maybe we'll find uh, some quartz veins somewhere. This is the same stuff as that little adit just up the hill. Little quartz here. Well, I don't see any quartz, so they must have they must have had a uh, site of a quartz vein or something right where they dug the shaft. I see right underneath the head frame there, it looks like there's some rock. Let's take a look at that. Here's a shaft. It looks like it goes down only about 20 feet. I can see a Dr. Pepper can down there. Nope, just uh, thin bedded, fine grained, phyllitic material, gray and black. That's about all I see. I guess the moral of the story here would be if someone shows up at your doorstep with a piece of rock that has gold in it and they say it came from a certain location, don't necessarily believe them until you get to that location you can check it out for yourself. So I think there are some people here who gave money without looking at the prospect and uh, probably lost their money as an investment. So that's it for here. So thanks for watching. Let's head it back to the truck.